Good afternoon, everyone. Today we are gathered together to mark the extraordinary occasion of the opening of three new elementary schools. Our hopes and dreams for the future are embodied in our children. The schools they attend are the places of promise and the linchpin of our community. Whenever we design schools, we try and create uh, environments that will be supportive of how children learn. We're very conscious of creating appropriate environments for children that support the way that educators think about learning. You know, we had old elementary schools, so we right away said we want to do something different with libraries. And really most of this came from teachers and principals saying, you know, only one class can go at a time and it's scheduled. So we moved from that to this learning corridor concept where the library is almost a continuous presence throughout the building. Recent neurological research has really given us new insights into how we all learn, being very active. That mind-body engagement really helps reinforce learning. So what does that mean for a school? It means that you want to have places where children can move around, where children can build things. You want to have project-based activities. Another important idea is collaboration. Brains learn best when they work in concert with one another. We all learn in different ways. Schools need to have different types of spaces that support those different types of learning. Educators are saying that kids need what we call the four C's, communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking for the workplace, but also just the world we live in and the way that our economy is changing. So this space offers a lot of opportunity for a whole range of convocations of gatherings of kids to be taking place outside of the classroom. Instead of just being crowded in one spot, you get to you get to help others and go to different places. We've always felt that these activities and these project things were important. We couldn't do it in our classrooms. We always had to find spaces for it. But having the space and having the air will make it easier and therefore more fun. There's a time for whole class instruction, but much more of our curriculum is, is designed to be more personalized, more individualized, so you have children working in small groups. And it's kind of good to learn with other people. What you know is, is good, and what they know, you can put them together and make something to, to connect with both of your stuff, then you could be a good an even better student. We want our students to be able to spread out, whether it's a center of games and a center of problem solving, a center of skill practice, or it's everyone working on a group project at the same time. There'll be a variety of different ways to utilize the spaces, and we can always clean up our messes, which is ingenious to put sinks everywhere in a school. There are chairs and tables to sit at. There are flat surfaces to put projects on and to explain projects to other classrooms. So there's going to be collaboration among classrooms. All working on different projects at the same time and not getting in each other's way. The whole school is not only a library, but the whole school is sort of like a, a mixed media environment. It's all wired. Uh, anywhere from anywhere you are, you're going to be able to gain access to that information. And so when we bring everybody's strengths to something, we come up with a much better project. And isn't it good to teach children that that's how the real world works? We all collaborate more because we're out in the hallway, or we're in the classroom, or we see what's going on, and it's, it's so much easier to step in and step out. The first grade teachers all work on the same science units. They can now set up that science unit and they can work together. So I think it's going to have to be a culture that's built of we're all in this together, there's things going on in the hallway, so not only do you have to be behave, but you have to be respectful of what's going on. Maybe you want to peek over what they're doing, but you can't be disruptive because the learning is going to be coming out of the classroom more often, so it's going to be a, a culture shift, I think, as well. I love the fact that there's no door here because kids can see the adults that are their teachers working with each other. The teacher on the south side of the building can see a fifth grade teacher on the, uh, on the west side, and it's kind of cool because they look all the way through class. When you have a very public culture of teaching and learning, it really raises the level of accountability for, for students, for teachers. The room here, I think, is wonderful. The room between the two rooms, because that has a window. I have no qualms at all about sending children in there and, and saying, hey, you know, you might want to work on this a little bit. So this could be easily a place where our two fourth grade teachers here 
plan together and work together. Um, it could be a place where they have kids that come do independent work here. It's a, it's a quiet space, which I like. They can close the door, but they've still got visual access. And it's nice that you can have visual accessibility right through to the other classroom. They've always got about 10 sets of adult eyes just kind of informally kind of supervising and surveying them. And that allows them to take on a role of being much more independent and responsible. For me as a principal, I have the opportunity to see a whole lot of what's going on. Transparency gives you a sense of, you know, what's happening as you walk down this hall. You can see into, into the classroom, you can see into the library. Um, we've got display happening. Eventually, we're going to see lots of rows of projects here. The whole school becomes kind of an evolving artifactorium and like a science fair, but it's happening all the time and it's not just science. Kids take great pride when they see their work being displayed and also students learn from seeing other students' displays. And when kindergartners see second graders doing things, they think, oh, that's achievable. These small project areas that are uh, all around that I'm s still discovering, to be honest, walking around, <laughs> You know, anytime you can get third graders up and out of the room, and walking around the school and to different places, they get excited about that. It makes learning feel very special. Every time we move to another place, a change of scenery is fantastic for kids, so they're not feeling stale. Now here, there's like, there's the nook here, and then there's the project areas and our classrooms and the library, so there's a lot more spaces to work. And it's good to yeah. move around sometimes because you get bored of the same place over and over again. Yeah. And yeah. Other places have other tools. We are about learning and learning takes place not just in classrooms but everywhere in this building. Everywhere you look in a nook or a cranny, there's a place for learning to take place. There's a place for kids to collaborate. One of the places that we're all coveting right now is the story room upstairs, which is this wonderful circular room, cozy and warm, and what better place than to have a story read to you. But one of the things we've learned is that reading aloud to a younger student is a very powerful intervention because they take pride in their ability to do it, and it's also just practice. You want me to do this another time? Yeah! Up there, um, there's like little, like, boxes. It absorbs the sound, really and it isn't so echoey when you speak. And it's like, oh, everybody will be able to hear. Acoustics are incredibly important within a school. As adults, we need only hear a portion of a conversation, and often we have enough context that we can understand what's being said. But for a young child, if you can't hear every word, you don't have that contextual backdrop to fill in what's missing. Natural light is critical in school buildings. We know there's been studies done that show that students learn more readily in naturally lit environments. So we work very hard to bring natural light into every space. Just the air in here, I think that's going to be huge. The old buildings had the big windows too, but the kids haven't been used to this before. They're used to, in the afternoons when it's hot, I'll sometimes look out at my class and they'll all be slumped over and sweating. And just, it's so, um, it doesn't get hot in here, you know, because of the way that the building was designed with the air exchange and the windows. That is really going to be a big upgrade. I like the pictures, like, where the little rooms are, because, um, like, it's about, Crystal McAuliffe, it's like in one part there's a spaceship, in another there's Saturn, in another there's just a butterfly, and in one more there's a rocket ship. We know that students have to be emotionally engaged to learn well. We want our students to be good independent workers, good collaborative workers, problem solvers. We want them to stretch themselves in terms of research and synthesizing and communicating everything they've learned. If within our schools we can create places that the students enjoy, that they associate that sense of joy with learning, then that will help everyone understand that learning is a wonderful part of life. We spent a lot of time behind closed doors or working in isolation, and the learning corridor changes all of that. Teaching for a long time has been classroom-based, and to get it out of the classroom is one of the dreams that I've always had, and that's why I'm kind of on the cusp of retirement, but wouldn't happen until after I got to teach in this building. <laughs> it's brought youth back to my, <laughs> my thinking. Because you're not always stuck in the same place, like, like, 
because you're always like just looking for some inspiration and stuff. It makes us feel like we're trusted. And we're like, we're growing up. And we're responsible. Like if you walked in here, you would think it was the kind of place where it's like a boring work job where it's not very fun. You'd think of it as, wow, this is a cool and it, and it appears to be a school for kids. It just it even looks like it. And the colors are just very like bright and fun. It's not like the opposite of boring.